Welcome to my channel, folks. My name is Emil Torrey. If this is your first time, I am a filmmaker and content creator here in Los Angeles. Today, we are talking about crew jobs. What do people do on a film set? Now, I was going to do one long video, but there are so many jobs on a film set that this would be a six hour video. So no one's gonna watch that. This is gonna be a 13 part series. The first part in this video, we're talking about camera and lighting. What do people do in camera and lighting department? Who is who? The average number of people that work on a film set between 1984 and 2003 13, the thousand highest grossing films in Hollywood had on average 588 people that worked on those film sets. Now, the highest recorded crew that has ever worked on a film set was Iron Man 3. It had 3,310 people credited to making that film, which is just an astronomical number. And when you scale it down to smaller projects or independent projects, I've had a crew as small as five people. And five people is a non-existent crew according to Hollywood, but we got the project done. So it depends on your budget, depends on the project, but the average number of people that you're going to have on set are in the hundred. So we can't cover every single job in this video for obvious reasons. So this is going to be a 13 part series. Today, we're talking about camera and lighting. So let's get right into it. Camera and lighting department. One of the first jobs that you're going to see or hear on set is the first AC. The first AC stands for first assistant camera. The first assistant camera operator, the first AC has a team and part of their responsibilities is this loading and unloading gear but they report directly to the camera operator. They are responsible for whatever the camera operator may need. Things that go beyond their scope, they'll hand down to the second AC. The second AC or second assistant camera. Their responsibility is handling of the gear, responsible for tracking the camera, for the camera lenses, switching the lenses in and out. And then also they are responsible for the clapper marking. So when you hear that, that's gonna be the second AC on the movie set. And oftentimes they're the ones writing the information here. I've seen second ADs writing stuff on here if the second AC is busy, but normally it's gonna be the second AC that writes the information on here. And then when they say mark it, you'll see the second AC get up there and mark the shot. Now on a movie set, have you ever heard the term best boy? Now best boy is part of the camera and lighting department. Best boys are the right hand person for the key grip. They have more responsibility than other gaffers. They report directly to the key grip. Whatever their responsibilities are delegated from the key grips will go down to the best boy. They are an essential part of the lighting and the electrical department. The best way to think about this is best boys are the assistants to either the gaffer or the grips, the key grip. So there's two different types of best boys. There's best boy electric, and then there's a best boy for the key grip, responsible for the lighting and the rigging, the key grip. That's what the key grip does. The easiest way to think of this is the best boy is the foreman for those jobs. They assist the gaffer, they assist the key grip, and then the responsibilities for the best boy, or in other words, the foreman on a movie set are delegated from the key grip and their responsibilities may change depending on what the needs are on that set. So best boy electric, best boy grip, every Every single set has one or both. It is an essential part of a movie set. It's a very important role. Camera operator. Now camera operator is exactly what it sounds like. The camera operator, you may have a cam op for A cam, B cam, C cam if you have multi cam, but on film sets as opposed to television, on film sets you're gonna have the camera operator, you're gonna have the first AC, second AC, but the camera operator is responsible for all the shots, whether it be a static shot, a handoff shot, and very often in a lot of films, you're gonna see what they call a steady cam shot. Now a steady cam shot is someone who wears a rig. The camera is put on a hydraulic lever so that it's balanced so that the camera operator is not carrying 50 pounds. And then as they run with the talent or as they run up and down stairs or whatever they're doing, that camera will actually flow on a hydraulic lift and it's very lightweight for them. And then they're able to move the camera as they need it. So steady cam operators is a very specific specific job, the actual rig they're wearing. I've seen the least expensive one for nine, ten thousand dollars something like that, but they can go upwards of $20,000 if you have just this Iron Man steady cam rig. They're very expensive, but they're very necessary on almost all sets. I can't think of a set that I've been on, including my own sets, where there hasn't been a steady cam operator. They're just an essential part of movie making. You can get shots that you can't get if you have only a tripod or if you have a crane, you know, all these big pieces 
pieces of equipment. So Steadicam operators is an essential part of every movie. If you have a Steadicam operator, treat them like kings. They are kings on set because they will bring you shots that will win you awards. Now let's talk about dolly grip. If you ever seen on a movie set, there's tracks and then there's looks like a little rail car that's on the tracks and then there's a platform and then you have the camera and then usually the director or the cinematographer is sitting on top of that. Well, those aren't automated. So the dolly grip is responsible for making sure that those tracks are laid down, they're level, they're secure. And then once we start shooting, that dolly grip will actually be behind and actually pushing that little rail car down the tracks so we can get a smooth shot. Now, oftentimes we have automated systems now where we can put really heavy rigs and just I will control it through a computer system and it'll do it. But very often, if it's a really large set, it's not an automated system. We actually lay down the tracks. JL Fisher is one of the big companies that has these tracks. And then once I'm sitting in my director seat or the cinematographer sitting in the seat, then I yell action and then the dolly grip will actually push us down those tracks. And oftentimes if the talent is to the left or the right, you'll see this in major motion pictures. As we're going down the tracks, the dolly grip is pushing me this way. We are turning the camera like this. That way we can get this really smooth push in shot. Now these tracks sometimes will go for hundreds of feet and they even curve. So we have tracks that are circle, that curve, that are half moon, depends on what the needs of the shot are. Very versatile, but it's a very important job. A dolly grip needs to know the speed at which they need to push that and they coordinate with the cinematographer, with the camera operator. Dolly grip, if you get on set as a dolly grip, remember that you are an essential part of getting that shot that's gonna end up on the big screen. The cinematographer is what film schools are built upon. So the cinematographer, the DP, the director of photography is responsible for the entire camera department, grip and electrical. It's one of the executive positions. In another video, we're gonna talk about the difference between above the line and below the line, which really comes down to budgeting and how we budget the roles. The cinematographer, the best ones, have the expertise and their own artistic eye, and then they coordinate with the vision of the director. Very often, this has happened to me multiple times, almost on every single set, I have a vision as a director, this is what I want, but I may not have the communication skills or I don't know how to explain it to the cinematographer. So a really great cinematographer will listen to the director, understand the vision and say, okay, well, what if we did it this way? This will accomplish your vision. Or how about we shoot underneath? Or how about we shoot above? Because that'll actually enhance the storytelling process. I understand that you want this message to come across, but if we shoot it from this angle, like a Dutch angle, it portrays a different message and it'll get your message across to the audience in a more impactful way. That is the great cinematographer who has that eye and who has the artistic talent to be able to explain to the director how to accomplish the director's vision. Now on every big movie set, you're gonna have someone called a general operator. Now a general operator in its simplest form is a jack of all trades. It's not a PA who will stand outside, coordinate with the extras, the background talent, and do other things. A general operator is that extra hand, that extra hand to the camera department, the electrical, the lighting, the grips, and they are an essential part because oftentimes as things are moving really quickly, especially if we're on location, we don't have a lot of time to be on that location for days and days and days. We have to move really quickly. So as many hands as we can get to move the process along, the better. And that's where a general operator will get involved and whatever needs to be done, that general operator will jump in and knock out that task. The electrician. The electrician on set is exactly that. They are an electrician. If it requires electricity, we need, we need an electrician. I, the director, I, the executive producer, am not touching anything involving electricity. I know, that's shocking. I'll be here all week for those bad jokes. The truth is, is that if it involves electricity, we have to have an electrician. It's safety issues and electrician, without a doubt, is one of the most important jobs on set. If the lights don't work and I'm freaking out as the director, then I'm gonna call the key grip and they're gonna call the electrician if they're not an electrician already. It's just essential. You have to have an electrician on set if you have lights, if you have generators, you have AC, you have all these things going on that require electricity, turn to the electrician, don't touch anything, let the electrician deal with it. Now we get to the key grip. The key grip is responsible for everything non-electrical. The key grip's responsibility is to work with the gaffer and execute the vision of the director of photography, the cinematographer, and actually plan out the camera and the lighting. They also build rigs if needed 
be. Now, one really important part of a key grip is to work with the gaffer and build those rigs, but it requires a lot of knowledge. You have to understand mathematics, you have to understand physics, because if you're gonna build a big, huge rig and there's gonna be talent or crew on that rig, it needs to be very stable. And that's where the key grip will come in. They're also in charge of inventorying all the gear before, during, and after the film shoot. Now we on sets where you're using film, you're gonna have a job called the film loader. Now the film loader's job is to literally pull out that film, inventory that film roll, and then get a new roll of film and put it into the camera, make sure that it's running and ready to shoot. Nowadays, because we're using digital cameras, we have a new position, which is essentially the film loader been updated version, it's called DIT, it's Digital Information Technician. So what their job is, let's say we're using the Alexa 35, as soon as we cut and that memory card is full, their job is to pull out that memory card, inventory it, and actually upload it to whatever computer software or computer storage we have, get that memory card cleared, and then back into the camera. But oftentimes on really big sets, we have multiple memory cards, but their job is still to pull out that memory card, offload it onto whatever storage system we have, and then put that new memory card back into that camera. A DIT is essentially an updated version of a film loader, but there are still films out there that shoot on film, so you'll have the film loader on film sets and then a DIT on sets where they're using a digital camera. Now I keep on bringing up this term gaffer. The gaffer is the head of the lighting department. Without a gaffer, you don't have a movie. Without a gaffer, you have a home video, essentially. I would say on every single YouTube video, on this video, I am the gaffer. I'm the person in charge of the light. Without a gaffer, you have nothing. So on every single set, you have a DP, a director, you'll have the talent, and 100% on every single set, you have a gaffer. That gaffer is responsible for the lighting, for getting the lighting proper, for setting up the lights, for work, working with the key grips, working with the other grips, and making sure that the vision of the director runs smoothly through the eye and artistic talent of the cinematographer, and then everything is lit properly so that the ultimately you get the shot that you want. And now we come to the position of the grip. The grip is part of the grip and electrical department. They report directly to the key grip and the main responsibilities of the grip is moving and setting up equipment. They are an essential part on every single set. Even if you have one grip and one director, one cinematographer, that grip is still an essential part of the crew. The larger the production, the more grips that you're going to need. Now grips are also responsible for what we call grip trucks. Grip trucks uh, can be very very small, they can be half ton, one ton, two ton, or on major motion pictures, they can be 10 semi trucks full of lighting and electrical equipment. Grips are responsible for all of that. So every single movie set, no matter how big, how small, you are going to have grips on that set, otherwise you're gonna be doing everything yourself. And that covers the camera and lighting department. I hope you learned something, please consider subscribing. If you watch the video right here, you'll find out what the terms that you're gonna hear on set, especially if you are an actor, if you're a talent, you wanna make sure that you understand what marking a scene is, what it means when we say back to one, what does speeding mean on a movie set? So watch that video right there, that'll explain everything. And in the next video, we are going to talk about directorial department. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.